Okay, in this video we're going to find the response of the DC motor when it has non-zero initial conditions. In the previous video we looked at finding the transfer function and the transfer function is found assuming that the initial conditions on the motor are zero. So um, now we're going to go back and look at what happens if the initial conditions are not zero. Uh, the equation that I, or the two equations that I've drawn already are the equations that we got by taking Laplace transforms of the uh, coupled differential equations that describe the motor. And again, in uh, the previous video, we assumed that the initial conditions for i and omega were zero. Now we're not going to assume that. Instead, we're going to assume that omega of zero minus is 45 0.45 radians per second, and we'll assume that I of 0 minus is 0 amps. Okay, This corresponds to initial conditions of the um, motor going as fast as it possibly can with a voltage of 10 volts applied to it. When the motor is going that fast, because there's no friction on the load, no currents actually uh, flowing through the motor because you don't have to supply torque to keep the load going. Now, of course, this is not realistic. Um, generally, uh, you would have a current that still flows through the um, through the motor to take care of the uh, the friction. Um, we're also going to assume, for this example, let's say that Vs is zero volts. So the idea is right before I start computing things according to my um, uh, according to my Laplace transforms or, or to solve this before I start computing things I've got the motor spinning and then at time zero my well and to get the motor spinning that means I probably have a voltage across it but then at time zero I set that voltage to zero and so we're going to see how the motor responds um, when the voltage across the motor goes to zero. So um, I guess we'll just begin. The first thing to do here is uh, put our initial conditions in. Uh, our I of zero minus is zero. Our V of S again is going to be zero. Um, omega zero is going to be 45.0 four five radians per second. So um, that gives us now uh, two equations and we need to solve them for something. So I'll make some room here to solve them. Now the question is what do we want to solve for? Uh, we eventually want to know what happens to the speed of the motor over time as I start it with these initial conditions and then have the voltage be zero. So eventually we need to solve for omega s. And the way I think I'm going to do that is first solve um, the upper equation, this guy, for i s, and then we'll plug that into the lower equation for i s and divide through by s. We'll have omega s is equal to something and that will give us the Laplace transform of the output due to these initial conditions. So the first thing to do is to solve this upper equation for i of s. And the way I can do that is I notice that I have an i of s term here. I have another i of s term here. This term is zero. So and uh, it turns out that I've also done this incorrectly. There should be an S right there. If you go back to the first video and check, you'll find that there is indeed an S right there. So what I'm going to do is factor out these two I of S's and uh, see what I get. When I do that, I get 0 is equal to R plus S L times I of S plus K sub B omega S. 
Okay. Now I want to solve this equation for i of s. And so to do that, I'll take um, this term and subtract it from both sides so that I can move it over here. And once I've done that, then I'll take the r plus sl and divide this, both sides by it, and that'll leave me i sub s all by, or i of s all by itself. So when I do that, I get i of s is equal to minus kb over r plus sl times omega of s. Okay, so I've taken this first equation, the top guy up here, and solved it for i s to get this. Now I can take this expression for i s and plug it in to. Uh, okay, I was, thought for a minute that I'd made a mistake, but it appears that I either haven't made it or I'm not smart enough to tell where it is. Okay, so now I'll take this i s and plug it in here in the second equation. So when I do that, oops. I'm going to have, here we'll make that line go away, I don't know what happened there. I'm going to have s times omega, oh, this is terrible, of s minus 45.45 radians per second is equal to k t over i l times minus k b over r plus s l times omega s. Okay, so there you can see it. We've uh, got an equation where the only uh, time function, or the only uh, function is omega. So now all we have to do is solve for what omega should be and uh, take the inverse Laplace transform of the resulting mess, which it'll probably be a little messy, and uh, that will give us what omega s is in response to these initial conditions. So let's clear ourselves some space off up here. And uh, see what we can do. Uh, I think the obvious first thing to do is get all the terms with omega s on one side of the equal sign and all the terms without omega s on the other side of the equal sign. I've got this uh, negative sign on in front of this term. So basically, I can uh, write this as s omega s plus kt times kb over il times 1 over r plus sl times omega s. And that's equal to 45.45 radians per second. Okay. So now I can factor this omega s and this omega s out of the equation to get um, omega s times s plus kt kb over il 1 over r plus sl is equal to 45.45 radians per second. And now to get omega s, again, recall I want this omega s. So what I'm going to do is divide, well, first I'm going to make some space to do this in. Okay, now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 
this big ugly thing, and um, that will give me uh, the equation in terms of just omega s. So I do that, I get omega s is equal to 45.45 radians per second divided by this big ugly thing, which is s plus kt kb over il 1 over r plus sl. Okay, so um, unfortunately I'm out of time already. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. And so uh, we'll end the video here and in the next video we'll actually uh, go through this, this whole mess here, uh, simplify it some so that we can actually figure out what it looks like when we um, when we divide by this uh, thing in the denominator, and then we'll try to figure out how to take the inverse Laplace transform of omega s to get the time function. So that will happen in the next video. Stay tuned.